Uh, Singapore is investing $23.5 million, uh, Singapore dollars that is, into quantum technology capabilities to solve a range of real-world challenges. The technology can boost computer speeds over a trillion times faster than an ordinary laptop. Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet says it's a game-changer amid a fast-changing cybersecurity landscape. He was speaking at the Asia Tech X Singapore Summit. Geraldine Yap reports. Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet described her efforts to address cyber threats as a cat and mouse game due to criminals constantly trying to stay a step ahead of regulators, laws and standards. But things could change if authorities are able to harness quantum technologies effectively. The fastest quantum computer is more than 150 million times faster than the fastest supercomputer. Quantum computers can solve in minutes a problem which takes a supercomputer 10,000 years. Two new programs have been launched under the Quantum Engineering Program. The first is the National Quantum Computing Hub, which will bring together researchers from institutes of higher learning and ASTAR to develop the tech. It will also train new talent to supply workers for the emerging industry. The second program is the National Quantum Fabless Foundry, which will focus on the manufacturing that's needed to drive quantum tech efforts. These include micro and nano fabrication of quantum devices. Mr Heng says these investments will help Singapore anticipate the future and stay ahead of malicious online actors. The greater the potential of cyberspace, the greater the cyber risk. Malicious actors will seek to profit from this through any means. It is not sufficient to try to stay one step ahead. To do so, we often end up one step behind, chasing down and closing the latest threat. To counter them, we not only need to remain vigilant to, present, to present threats, must, but must also stay invested, you know, to stay ahead. To keep Singapore's critical infrastructure safe in the age of quantum tech, the country will trial communications technologies that will provide robust network security. So what exactly is quantum technology and why is it being touted as a quantum leap in computing? Well, to answer this, we first have to look at how a classic computer operates. Now, computers like the ones you and I use, can only perform one task at a time. The entire operation revolves around a two-symbol system, zero and one, also known as binary code. Now, this is where quantum computers have the high ground. They can tackle multiple processes at the same time, and that's because instead of binary code, quantum computers work with quantum bits, which can exist as a one, a zero, or even both at the same time. Now, to get a better idea of what a quantum computer can do, uh, take a look at this. Imagine you have four doors in front of you, all but one are locked, and you need to figure out which door is unlocked. Uh, current computers have to try each door one at a time. Still manageable with just four doors, but what if uh, there's a million or even a billion doors? Now, that's where quantum computers could prove to be a game changer. It could, theoretically, try all the doors at once and instantly find out which one is unlocked. And this could revolutionize the world, especially in sectors which require complex calculations on a regular basis. Joining us now in the studio to untangle the intricacies of quantum computing, we have with us Dr. Tan Se Hui. She's Chief Science Officer of Horizon Quantum Computing. That's a Singapore-based company providing software applications based on the technology. Good evening, Dr. Tan. Thank you for joining us here in the studio. So quantum computing isn't the easiest concept to explain. Did we do it justice? I think there was a fantastic um, explanation that you did with the Perfect example. And uh, you, were going to, you were going to actually give us a, 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 an idea about um, what quantum positioning is. That's right. So uh, quantum computing isn't very easy to explain, as you have really put it, because it, you know, it is about the physics of very small uh, particles, you know, subatomic particles. But what I have here is really an example that tries to draw us back into the real world. Mm -hmm. um, I have here a single Singapore dollar coin, uh, which you might recognize. Um, so the state of zero and one that was being talked about in the binary code is really can be thought of as a heads or tail of a coin. 
And then when we talked about uh, a quantum bit state, really, uh, sorry, a, maybe a classical bit is really the heads or tail of this coin. But for a quantum bit, you can actually think about spinning, oops, <laughs> spinning the coin. Okay, it didn't really work, but when you're spinning the coin, um, the coin itself isn't really in the state of a tail or, or head of tail, but really in both because you can't really see what it is. And essentially, you can think about it analogously uh, like a quantum bit. It can be both in the state of zero and one. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I guess you know a lot of right. uh, a lot of quantum concepts can then be used um, to create real world uh, applications mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, let's drill down a bit more on that. I'm wondering what real world opportunities can uh, quantum computing unlock, but for Singapore specifically, and in what sectors? Yes, um, as with a lot of like high performance computing uh, um, uh, technology, quantum computing essentially is a high performance com uh, computing tool. So for applications, we rely on uh, knowing the algorithms, you know, the steps you need to perform in order to get the application. So if uh, the applications that we're talking about here are pharmaceutical, so uh, simulations of very complex molecules, um, there is a uh, Applications in optimization, which is used in banking, which is very important to sectors in fi the finance sector in Singapore. Uh, also, uh, in things like um, uh, you know search, which you already talked about uh, in your example. So uh, these things, quantum computers have algorithms that we know about, but there are also many others that we don't know about, and really we are limited by um, the, the backlog of problems that we have to solve mm. to enable those. So going back to what you were explaining earlier in, in regards to the concept of uh, quantum uh, computing, one key characteristic of it is uh, this idea of quantum entanglement. I mean, some people say this is going to change the world. Uh, how so? What, what is it going to mean if, if we use it in the way that uh, you know, we perceive it can be used? Right. So coming back to the analogy of the coin, um, so instead of having just one coin, Maybe you have like two, three or four, you know, many coins, right? So that happens in uh, phys uh, ph physical systems, quantum mechanical systems. And what entanglement means is that uh, we actually have a way of um, being able to tell the state of other part more, more than one particle by just uh, measuring the state of one of those particles. So being in a state of entanglement, so if we talk about, if, we, if I look at this coin, uh, if I prepare an entangled state, if this, co if this first coin is in heads, I can be prepare another coin um, so that when I measure the first one and it's in one, st one, one state, like heads or tail, the second coin I would know immediately if it's a heads or tail. Right, so one relates to the other. One relates to the other, okay. it's like correlates mm. with the other. Right. Speak, yeah. Well, we, we've talked about quantum technology being a, a game changer and its potential is, is really quite evident. Why then is the technology not more widely available? It, it comes down to um, the hardware accessibility. I think what we are seeing now in the quantum community, uh, quantum computing community, is that there's a lot of um, uh, investment being made um, by large MMCs like Google and IBM, coming in and creating hardware that we can access uh, and try out. So it's like saying we have this thing that we can try. Um, so in the research community, we have been looking at it for a very long time, but no way of actually saying if we can actually run those mm -hmm. algorithms on actual computers. Mm -hmm. um, so in, to, to your question, I think um, essentially at a high level, uh, quantum computing is nascent, like it's a nascent technology. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been studied for a little, for two decades, like a little over two decades. Um, but really we're just starting to see, um, you know, hardware coming out and us being able to use it and connect to people doing real-world problems, um, coming in and saying, hey, actually, I have these problems that I see that could be used for quantum computing, um, and then trying it out on actual hardware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be applicable. It has so, to be applicable. So in its nascent stages, as it is, yes. it needs money, it needs funding. Uh, we've heard today that many millions are being put uh, into investing into quantum computing. Where does Singapore currently rank in terms of quantum computing? And, you know, as in its stage as it is now, what more needs to be done to sort of lift it to that next, that next yeah. level? It's interesting you should say that, actually. Singapore, um, in terms of uh, research uh, in quantum computing, 
uh, Singapore has had the Research Center of Excellence mm. um, for a long time now, uh, the uh, Center for Quantum Technologies, and it's deemed as one of the uh, best research centers in the world for quantum computing. Um, but in terms of um, adoption of quantum computing, I think you know more could be done to outreach to industries, government. Um, but as a quantum computing company in Singapore, we have been getting a lot of inbound interest in the mm. recent years um, to ask about you know using a quantum computer and how to use it, creating algorithms uh, for for those use cases. Dr. Tan, thank you so much for coming into the studio and so uh, expertly explaining this uh, concept to us and, and for that quantum leap in understanding quantum computing. Uh, we've been speaking there to Dr. Tan Sohui, Chief Science Officer from Horizon Quantum Computing.